Hey VC, Jack here. Welcome to Final Martini. I'm here to do a contest entry for Chris. And his channel is Chris from Record Talk. That's Record as in R-E-K-K-I-D. He is from Kentucky. He's got a fantastic channel. He does really short videos. And right off the top, I have to say that Chris is responsible for me watching hours and hours and hours of flip-throughs at antique malls for basically looking at shit-ass records. You've I'll find one once in a while, maybe every three videos, but uh, that's besides the point. They're really fun videos and he's got great comments. So anyways, this contest is built around leap years. Now, yesterday was February the 29th. This year is a leap year. So he has got one question that we all have to answer and then two bonus questions. So I am going to go on to the first question, which is showing a record from a leap year. So I am going to, I am going to, better everybody. I'm not just going to show one record. I'm going to show two records from each year. So 1968 was a leap year, the year that the Kinks released. The Kinks are the Village Green Preservation Society. Great record. Maybe one of their best. It's when they decided to uh, stop doing uh, power pop songs and go on to their satirical kind of Victorian take on uh, British society. Fantastic record. Same year, 1968, The Birds, The Notorious Birds Brothers, uh, an album called Space Odyssey. This is on a Cheapies label, great record. And this is uh, recorded just after David Crosby was fired and they took on, and just before Graham Parsons joining the band. So this is a fantastic record, by the way. And it's not hard to find, highly recommended. 1972, Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder released two records in 1972. This is the first of them. This is Music of My Mind. Of my <laughs> music of my Mind. The next record he released in the same year is Talking Book, which uh, eclipsed this one in sales. But this is an important record because it's uh, the start of a, a string of about five or six brilliant albums that Stevie did. Fantastic uh, record. I'm not taking them out of the sleeves. Sorry for the glare. Stevie Wonder, Music of My Mind. 1972 as well, Little Feet, Sailing Shoes, fantastic record, great cover art by Neon Park, um, uh, fantastic songs all the way through, but my favorite cut is uh, the first cut on side one. I've talked about this before, it's easy to slip. Why don't you stream that song and tell me that it's not a great song? Overlook song. Again, 1970, well, that was 1972, I'm getting mixed up here, but this is 1976. And Graham Parker's first release, Howlin' Wind, released in 1976. Fantastic record. I don't think he ever surpassed this. I mean, he's done a, a number of great records. I'm a big Graham Parker fan, but this one is an essential to have in your collection. Just fantastic. Great band. His band was The Rumor. Finally, in 1976, Jeff Beck wired the late... Great, Jeff Beck. Fantastic jazz fusion, fusion record. My copy is a little bit worn. That's because I played the shit out of it when I first got it. Fantastic record. Uh, Max Middleton, uh, Narana Walden, and Jan Hammer playing on this. So if you like jazz fusion, this is, a, this, this is an essential for your, your collection. Okay, on to the bonus questions. Um, and they were tricky. So he wants us to show a number one record that was show a record that was number one on a leap year so in 1964 february 29th of course the beatles had number one hit with i want to hold your hand i wanted to jump on this uh this uh, contest because i know there's not too many there's not too many number ones that are released on leap years so fantastic uh my introduction to the beatles i was nine years old going on 10. Meet the Beatles saw them, of course, on the Ed Sullivan Show. Uh, and this is from Meet the Beatles, the first album by England's phenomenal pop combo. Canadian Press. Great record. Okay, now this one is tricky because he asked us to, just let me refer to my notes here, show an album released on February 29th in a leap year. Well, Chris showed Robert Plant's album, uh, which I don't have, 
But as far as my research goes, I think that's the only album that was ever released on February 29th, on any leap year. So uh, he's already shown it. Uh, so, and I don't have it, so I can't show it. So I am going to try for some bonus points here. So I am going to talk, I'm going to show you something related to February 29th. And on February 29th, 1976, this man performed at the Olympiad in Detroit, Cobo Hall. Uh, this is David Bowie. He was on the Station to Station tour. I don't happen to have Station to Station. That is one of the records that, that's one of the holes I have to fill. But maybe this weekend I will uh, find a copy. But I'm going to show Aladdin Sane because uh, the great song Panic in Detroit is on this uh, record and uh, related to Detroit. And I will go even a little further and I will tell you, just refer to my notes and flip the page over here, I will tell you the set list of that night. Station to Station, Changes, Life on Mars, Queen Bitch, Five Years, Suffragette City, Panic in Detroit, Gene Genie, Diamond Dogs, Rebel Rebel, Rebel, Rebel Word on a Wing, TBC 1-5, Stay, and he finished off with I'm Waiting for the Man, Lou Reed's song. So there you go. I can go even farther than that. I can tell you his band lineup. Stacy Hayden was on lead guitar. And Stacy Layden, I have a connection with him. He was a young guitar player from Toronto, and he was, I worked in a record store in 1976, and he was my, one of the record store manager's um, roommate. So he was really excited when he, uh, when he got the word that his, his buddy was uh, going on tour with David Bowie, as you can imagine. Next, Carlos Alomar on rhythm guitar, George Murray on bass guitar, Dennis Davis on drums, and Tony Kay, late of Yes and uh, Flash on keyboards. So that was uh, quite a lineup, quite a song list. Um, hopefully that uh, meets all your criteria. I know I cheated a little bit on the last question, but you know, it's like if you go into an exam and you're kind of stumped on a question, um, so obviously you go on to the next question, try to answer all your questions, and then go back to that stumper. So uh, I found uh, in my university career, if you don't write anything, you don't get any marks. If you write something, you might be able to pull off a mark or two, and that mark or two might be the difference between getting a C minus and a C, or in my case, of course, an A minus or an A. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed that, Chris. Uh, I am going to uh, a record fair tomorrow, so I'm really excited. I might find that David Bowie record. So until my next video, uh, hope you guys have a great weekend, and uh, cheers. Till next time.